Hi, this is Sovlin Bharti and welcome to TFR Insights. And today we have with us once again, Mike Jung, CEO at Cloud Spectre. Mike, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be back on. Just to remind our viewers, they already know, but tell me a bit about Cloud Spectre. What do you folks do? Yeah, so uh, we specialize on basically benchmarking and measuring uh, cloud infrastructure performance. Um, so whether that's uh, testing out you know, the virtual CPU performance over at like Amazon or the storage performance or GPU performance at say Linode. Um, we work with a lot of providers and uh, basically let them know how they how they stack up in terms of performance and value. If I'm not wrong, earlier this month, the uh, alternative cloud provider Linode, they released a report uh, from your, you know, uh, bench, latest benchmarking where you benchmarked, you know, VMs across Alibaba, AWS, DigitalOcean, GCP, Linode, and Microsoft Azure. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, the scope of that benchmarking report. Yeah, so the the idea was to kind of test out Linode's uh, latest. Um, they just re they basically just released their latest generation AMD offerings, um, and that was basically applied to all of their their shared smaller VMs as well as their larger um, dedicated CPU VMs. Um, so basically, we kind of ran the gamut of of CPU. Uh, storage and and database benchmarks against them in, in similar competition at those kind of the small tier and the larger dedicated tier, um, and uh, that was basically basically the scope. And out of that, um, Linode uh, came out looking really really great, thanks to honestly the latest generation AMD offerings. I will talk about the report. I want to understand a bit about the the procedure, the methodology, the parameters that you use for this report benchmarking? Um, yeah, so it's kind of our, our standard methodology. Um, we'll basically test multiple VMs of the same type, so we don't just measure a single VM. Uh, we like to measure, uh, you know, a couple different, just to get it, just to get an accurate view of performance. Um, and then we'll run uh, a gamut of test suites, uh, at least 100 test um, iterations, and then we'll kind of take those those results, and um, that's how we come up with the, with the final performance results. Um, and in terms of who we compare um, you know, or what we compare the VMs against, we're looking to kind of similar to apples to apples comparison, right? So if we're going to measure um, a small shared VM over at Linode, we're going to compare that against the equivalent at DigitalOcean um, and Amazon, and same thing with the dedicated um, CPU or compute optimized VMs. Last time when we talked, it was the GPU benchmarking uh, that Cloud Spectre did. This time, it's about CPUs. Can you talk about why? customers do need to kind of keep an eye on how are the CPUs performing because of course I mean it's a, the answer is obvious but still when we look at infrastructure cloud where people are running different kind of workloads what is the kind of significance of uh, really knowing uh, the per performance and cost and everything of CPUs? What role does CPU play in infrastructure? Sure. So, um, you know, I think one of the reasons to keep an eye on, on general CPU performance is that, you know, let's say even if you are at a larger cloud provider today, you might be running um, on infrastructure that's a few years old or VM configs that were made a couple of years ago. And while everything might be performing just fine for you, um, you may find that by moving to kind of the latest and greatest offerings, um, you're gonna get basically more bang for your buck, or you're basically you're gonna get more compute power for what you spend each month, which is obviously a big deal. Um, and uh, in terms of just measuring CPU performance in general, I mean, that's kind of the heart of, of computing, right? I mean, some workloads can, can be offloaded to a GPU, um, but anything else is is running on that CPU. So the CPU performance is still extremely relevant um, today, especially for just general workloads. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, and which is more or less like uh, the key uh, findings. So talk about some of the highlights of this uh, benchmarking report. Yeah. So um, in general, Lino basically outperformed in in almost every single case, um, especially when it comes to CPU performance. And again, that's because they're they're using the latest generation. AMD offering, um, and that was true. It basically lined out one and outright performance for their the small shared CPUs um, or VMs, and as well as the uh, the larger uh, dedicated CPU uh, VMs. Um, in terms of storage performance, we also tested storage performance, and Linode was very very strong um, in basically all cases there. Um, we did also test kind of, a, a, instead of just testing in like synthetic um, CPU performance or storage performance, we also um, basically created a database and, and used uh, Sysbench, which has an OLTP test to kind of um, measure what, you know, 
what, what a database might perform like on each of these offerings. Um, and Linode was very strong there as well. So its key takeaways are, are they offer great performance, uh, some of the best we've seen so far, and they also offer great value when you factor in, in the price and the performance that you get in basically all those scenarios. Uh, let's talk about uh, processors. Uh, when we look at AMD versus Intel, uh, any anything interesting that uh, kind of caught your attention there? Um, I mean, Intel, the the Intel VMs that that we were um, testing from other providers, they were generally using the latest and greatest um, from the Intel offerings. But if you've been paying attention to kind of what AMD has been doing lately, um, their their C, their latest CPUs are 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 really outperforming Intel in in many cases um, and. The fact that that Linode is using that that latest, I believe it's the Rome um, generation. I think that gave them that edge over most of the providers, um, even if they are using the latest and greatest Intel. So um, AMD has a lot to do with it, but Linode also just has solid infrastructure too. Right. Uh, how does the the use of AMD at uh, Linode is kind of helping users? Because when we talk about cloud, there are a couple of things that matter. Number one is performance. That's why you you want to leverage cloud. Second is uh, cost, and the third is business continuity or reliance on uh, that you know service that you are using. So so talk about. Uh, how the use of AMD allowed Linode to maintain its kind of uh, advantage or edge over competitors in all these areas or other areas that you noticed? Yeah, so Linode tends to be pretty quick at adopting um, newer technology. So I think I think that helps quite a bit. I mean, a lot of other providers are, might be okay um, you know, using a, a CPU that came out, you know, a year or two ago if customers aren't complaining. But um, Linode is always kind of looking at the latest and greatest hardware, and I think that that's really, that's really helping. They're quick to, um, hey, we, we were using the last generation of AMD. This new generation came out. Let's see what the difference is. And I think providers that are constantly assessing and, and comparing what they have now versus what they could have um, are going to tend to always lead um, in terms of performance. Um, just because um, they're more agile in that sense. Whereas the hyperscale providers, they, they still come out with the, the new hardware, but the, the, the refresh cycle is just not nearly as quick as what you see on alternative clouds. This question it will put you in a kind of tricky or tidy spot because you want to be as neutral as you can be. But if I ask you that based on your benchmark, if I ask you, know, where do customers get the most value for their buck when it comes to performance, you know, uh, efficiency, of course, uh, accessibility and cost, um, how Linode shines in those areas? Uh, talk about that if I like, hey, who do you suggest I should go with? Yeah, so I, I would say, I mean, I, if, if you're running a database today and you really care about database, Performance, let's say. I mean, that that scenario where Linode is is really strong because they offer not only good CPU performance, they offer very very fast storage performance compared to the hyperscalers. Um, so when you factor that in, and you know the amount of queries per second you can get or transactions per second, um, you know that's that's going to be much higher um, at Linode compared to other providers. So I think that that gives them that that edge. Um, and to say, you know, hey, if you if you're running a database workload. Um, you know, check out Linode versus saying, "Hey, if you just need fast CPU or disk, um, you know, I think everyone everyone needs that." So I would say the the one spot where they really shine is when you start to to do more of the application benchmarking, um, and, and you're kind of putting together the storage performance as well as the CPU. I, you know, I think maybe one of the things that might be worth mentioning or, or talking about is just the exp you know we talk a lot about just performance and price, but um, I think there's also, you want to factor in, well, what if I need to just spin up some VMs real quick um, just for an extra workload or just to play around with something? It's very easy to do um, at, a, at a provider like Linode. Um, they're very simple product offerings. Their interface is, is rather simple and straightforward. So you can get in there and really, you know, if you don't believe what I'm saying, you can go in, create a VM and test it really quick and easily. Um, whereas if you do it at a larger provider, you got to jump through 20 different hoops to create a VM, right? And then after you've destroyed it, you need to go track everything down, make sure you've removed it or you keep getting billed for it. And at Linode, it's just very, very simple and, and quick. And I think that, um, you know, if, if you're at one of the larger providers now and you're afraid to learn a whole brand new cloud or interface, 
Um, don't don't let that stop you from testing out these smaller clouds because they've they've um, really simplified um, really simplified their UI and, and made it easy just to create what you need. So I don't know if that's that's worth mentioning, but I feel like it's it's kind of important. It's easy to hop in and test, is what I'm saying. Mike, thank you once again uh, for talking about the CPU. Last time we talked about GPUs, and I will look forward to talk to you again when the new report comes out. So once again, thank you because you are you know uh, it helps our viewers who are consumers of these uh, cloud providers to 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 know uh, what are the things they should look for when they pick their cloud provider. Right. So thanks for the service that you're doing. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. And um, yeah, I would encourage any feedback. If there's anyone watching this and we haven't tested something you, you care about, um, you know, drop it in the comments or, or reach out to one of us. And, uh, you know, always happy to get this info out to people.